One of the most significant technology demos here at ONS Europe this year focused on the virtual central office for mobile services. Heather, good to see you again on Telecom TV. It's great to see you again too. This demo, this Fisio mm -hmm. demo, um, it was first announced about a year ago, wasn't it? So give me some background to how it came about. Yeah. So last year at the Beijing Opina V Summit, we did our first version of it, um, focusing on uh, residential and enterprise services. Um, it originally came about, you know, uh, just talking with our end users and the vendors, you know, sort of about the virtual central office, then wanting us to sort of demonstrate how that might look with a combination of, you know, open source components as well as some, you know, proprietary VNFs. Um, and since last year, you know, we knew we wanted to, you know, do a mobile use case of it. And sort of in that time, you know, 5G has really started, you know, marching ahead. So we wanted to start looking at sort of, you know, toward the road, toward, on the road towards 5G, you know, what that, you know, what the virtual central office components would need to look like and sort of do a proof of concept around that. Talk me through what we saw on stage during the demo. Basically, we had, that you did not see on stage, uh, was a um, sort of virtual central office in a lab um, back in uh, San Jose. Um, California, um, and in there we also had two cell phones and a Faraday cage um, with a software-defined uh, 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 radio on them, um, and then um, and with a lot of uh, next-generation mobile core sort of software-defined. And then on stage we had basically what would be a branch, um, and then on we actually sort of were able to manipulate the phones back in California via an app, and we were able to do. Um, sort of a live phone call from the uh, cage to the stage um, using that uh, basically sort of the, the network itself was sort of a 5G sort of ready um, virtual network with um, a, a lot of open source components and we were able to complete a phone call from California to the stage there and pick it up and show everyone that the phone call had come through. As you say, there was a lot of open source components, but there were also a lot of uh, contributors as well. Yes, yes. Does this show the uh, and illustrate the value of, of the of the open source community? Yeah, yeah. I mean, just the fact that we had so many companies willing to work together um, with different open source components, as well as some companies' proprietary components that were interoperable with that. Um, you know, the handset interoperability with the virtual uh, evolved packet core, um, and then also, you know, we showed software basically with five different open source consortia were involved in it as well. So, if you take the demo, this proof of concept, how does this relate to actual telco requirements? Um, how does it meet the need of, 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 of telcos, and, and how can they, how, how can they, at some point? use this in yeah. real networks? So basically sort of the different components that we brought into the demo were based on various um, requirements we've gotten from telcos of what they're thinking. Um, sort of the, the, the components need to be for the next generation like edge and, and 5G network. And um, you know, and obviously this, you know, this was a proof of concept, but you know, one of the things we, we've got um, are some different projects going on within OPNFV that are going to look at sort of now operationalizing those within the context of the open source organization. So we have a CRAN project um, that is going to take sort of, you know, sort of bring into OPNFV several of the you know, components that we use there, like the EPC, et cetera. Um, and then we've also got a project looking at hardware acceleration so that we can get a lot of really high throughput out of performance uh, out of the hardware at the edge. And um, you know, we've actually already sort of built in an open source next gen EPC into our regular CI/CD pipeline. So when we build our regular platforms for OPNFV, we actually deploy that on there to make sure that the various scenarios can support you know sort of uh, an EPC uh, VNF. That kind of continuing what we did there with that in the CID, just having that be become regular as a matter of course. You know, kind of come up with some of the. Yeah, we're going to write a, a, a solution brief where we talk about you know, how to configure the software, you know, how to use OPNFE installers and CI to start getting that system kind of out into labs so then the PICOs start to figure out how they want to deploy it as well. So th there's, there's still more work to do and we're going to still hear more about the, yeah. the, the VCO um, in, in the coming yeah. months. Yeah. yeah, another thing we're looking to do is look at how to make some of these components you know, more containerized and cloud native and sort of start going that direction and um, but just really keep marching forward, sort of showing progress, check in where we are at any given date, but you know, really at the end of the day, trying to march forward so our end users can start getting this stuff out there and start transitioning to their next gen services and start you know, getting those 5G services to their users. 
And for those companies that weren't involved uh, on this port, ca can they contribute now? Yep. It is never too late to get involved. And in fact, you know, we had some new companies this time um, that hadn't been involved in the first round. So you know, we'd love to see more folks involved. And um, you know, there is a VCO uh, mailing list that you can join or certainly join any of the actual projects within OPNFE that are working on this. Perfect. Heather, as always, great to talk to you. Thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. It's always great to chat with you, Guy, and I hope you had a fun time here in Amsterdam.